Hey guys, it's Max from Apple Insider. I'm very excited because I just picked up my own personal iPhone 10. Welcome to our ultimate Face ID test. So as you guys can see, I got the Space Gray model. And one thing that's different is not only the back, but also the sides of the phone that are a dark chrome compared to the regular chrome. Now in this video, unlike all the other guys who are just getting Halloween masks and testing them out, we're gonna be answering some of your questions and looking at uh, what angles it works, the distance that Face ID works, uh, how it works when it's laying on a desk, if you're used to using Touch ID and pressing your finger down to check things, and also Apple Pay and a bunch of other stuff. So let's go ahead, set a Face ID, and get started. The setup process is very simple. First scan, and we're just gonna move my head. One more time. And that is all. Much quicker than even using Touch ID. Before we start the test, I'll take a minute to explain exactly how it works and why it's so impressive. The iPhone X comes with an array of sensors built right into the notch at the top of the screen. Although True Depth uses all of the sensors, the Magic comes with a flood illuminator which fills in light while in dark environments, the dot projector which fills in over 30,000 infrared dots onto the user's face, and a dedicated infrared camera which captures an image of your face while also creating a facial depth map. Each iPhone X randomizes and encrypts the facial scan data in a unique way, which is then compared to the uniquely encrypted original scan. The data is stored on a specific chip on your phone and isn't available to other apps or even iOS itself. It never leaves the device, even in backups. This is why Face ID is 20 times more secure than Touch ID. So even though I just got this phone, the Face ID is very simple and easy to use and I'm already getting used to it. That was pretty close. Let's try that again. That time Face ID took longer. So it is slightly slower, and when you're just using one device, it's easier to tell, easier to do the test. And you could tell that Touch ID is quicker. And one option that Touch ID has is you're able to just press down with one action and open it up, or you can just press a little quicker and see your notifications. With the Face ID, it always has to be a two-step process, press and then swipe. I'm used to paying for my coffee using Apple Pay with Touch ID. Using Face ID, it's pretty similar. You double tap the side button and starts authenticating, and then you can go ahead and pay. A lot of people have asked us if Face ID will work while your phone is laying on a desk. Typically when I'm working, I like to have my phone off to the side. I can log in quickly using Touch ID and do something on my phone without needing to actually pick it up. Let's see if that will work using Face ID. So I have it set off to the side. I turn on the screen and I'm seeing that lock indicator at the top, meaning it is not finding my face. Let's go ahead and slowly move it forward. And it is still not working. Now I'm gonna to try to just bring it a little closer to me. And it unlocked. So there is a sort of range that you can uh, use Face ID while it's on the desk. If the iPhone is laying directly in front of you and fairly close, it will actually work. And that's because it has to take all those dots and has to project them and read your face. So if it's setting off to the side, those uh, infrared dots are not gonna reach your face. Now our suggestion is, if you wanna do this method and have the iPhone and have to pick it up, use some kind of a stand. Um, I recently purchased a Qi charging stand that will charge my phone and hold it at a 45 degree angle. And that will work just perfectly fine. It unlocks just like if you were using Face ID in any other scenario. But if you're used to using Touch ID, like I was with the phone set off to the side, that will no longer work. Another common question that we get is at what angles does a Face ID work? So if you're walking down the street and the iPhone is at belt level and you just kind of glance down, it most likely won't pick it up. But if you actually look directly at it, it will be able to scan your face. Same thing as if you're looking forward and you just glance at your phone at a 45 degree angle, it will actually unlock. So that's about the angle that we found it to work at. Another impressive feature is called attention awareness, which makes it so that the iPhone won't unlock unless you're directly looking at it. So none of your friends can pick it up and point it at you and get it to work. So I'm gonna turn it on and swipe and we'll test how this works. So it still hasn't unlocked until I get almost directly in front of me. That's when the unlock icon went off. So that's very impressive. Another question was the distance at which Face ID works. So I have fairly long arms and even stretching all the way out, it still recognizes my face and unlocks it. So you shouldn't have any issues. Face ID also looks at the eyes to make sure you're not sleeping and somebody's trying to unlock it. Let's test that out. 
Is that unlocking? Nope. And as soon as I opened my eyes, it recognized it and unlocked it. Let's test out if it'll work if there's multiple faces in the shot. Nope. Now let's test how well Face ID works when we add a few accessories. I'm gonna start off with my hood. Not a problem. Let's add some sunglasses, even though it's 33 degrees and cloudy here. Works just fine. How about a scarf? Still no problem. Let's pick it up just a little bit. Let's say it's really cold. Nope. Try it again. Let's put it down slightly lower. So it is looking at my mouth. Now let's take a step forward and get a little bit more extreme. <laughs> I don't know if this fits very well. Let's say I change up my hairstyle. It doesn't want to. It's too different for it. What's interesting is that the face ID will actually learn over time. So if your hairstyle you know, changes or your facial hair changes over time, it will learn that. Nope. <laughs> I guess that's not for me. Let's try something else. <laughs> nope, that doesn't work. Can't fool face ID. And last one. So none of those props work. Let's do a test a little bit different and use a piece of paper and see what exactly Face ID is looking at. So let's cover up the chin, still unlocked. Let's cover up my cheek, still unlocked. How about an eye? Still unlocked actually. My nose? Nope. Nope. This eye didn't work. This eye works. Let me try it a little bit different. Nope. Forehead. That worked. So it seems like it mainly looks at the center of the face and the eyes to see when to unlock. People were also wondering if Face ID works in the dark. Now obviously the screen's gonna let off some light, so you can't be pitch black, but we set it to the very minimal, so it's gonna be close. Yep, that worked. I'm gonna try again at uh, full arm's distance. Works perfectly. Now, one interesting thing to know is that Face ID can only be set up for one person, whereas Touch ID could have up to five fingerprints. So if you have somebody who had access to your phone with Touch ID, now with Face ID, they'll have to use a passcode. So overall, we're extremely impressed with Face ID, especially for first iteration. In all of our tests, it did better than we expected it to. But is it better than Face ID? Well, only time will tell. There's definitely some limitations, but we expect Face ID to improve over time, just like Touch ID did. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.